Hello, Peter the Cat here. Today I want to react to Jim Davis's Vice News interview, uh, where he talked about Garfield's 40th birthday and explained why Garfield is so popular. I thought it'd just be interesting to analyze. Garfield doesn't like Vice News because of how they gave Garfield Go a bad review last year, and he tried to tell Jim Davis not to do the interview, but Davis didn't listen. So let's see how the interview went down. The video opens talking about Donald Trump's election and how Vice President Pence is a Garfield fan. Today, as he turns 40, Mike Pence is vice president of the country, the guy from NBC's The Apprentice is somehow president, and Garfield is exactly the same. Now, why the video opens up talking about Trump's America, I don't know. Like, uh, Jim Davis doesn't say anything political, and uh, the interviewer never asks Jim Davis about his relationship with Mike Pence. So it's it's just a really weird way to open this video. I mean, imagine if Vice decided to interview the guy that draws the family circus, and they open the video by saying something like, in a time when Donald Trump is separating migrant children from their parents, what does it mean for Americans reading family-oriented comic strips? Let's ask Jeff Keen right now. The video then cuts to the Grand Pooba himself, Lord Jim Davis, and he's giving a meager reporter from Vice a grand tour of his palace, Paws Incorporated. The tour begins in a room filled with tons of Garfield products, and Lord Davis explains this is where he meets with agents to discuss concepts for different Garfield products. Lord Davis then guides the reporter into the art department, where we see several palace artists drawing the comic strip on behalf of their wonderful master. Lord Davis explains part of his job is approving or rejecting many different Garfield products each day. How often do you have to reject something? We, every day, we reject something. <laughs> I have to wonder, what's it like when Jim Davis has to pass on a Garfield product? Like, does he look at concept art and then he says to himself, Hmm, sorry, but this Garfield bikini and urinal don't make Posig's high standards. Reject it! It just makes me feel very blessed that all this Garfield stuff I own, like this lava lamp, uh, Garfield kitty letters, and this McDonald's Happy Meal toy here, like, all of this was approved by the Grand Lord Jim Davis himself. The reporter then meets another servant of Lord Davis, Derek Hall, and he explains a digital archive he created that allows him to search every single Garfield product in existence. The reporter watches a commercial of Garfield advertising a Chinese toothbrush, and the reporter has to play smart aleck and point out that Darley toothpaste used to be called Darkie. Oh, for Darley toothpaste. You know that used to be called Darkie toothpaste? I don't know if he's like trying to search for something controversial in Garfield, but it's not really necessary. I mean, just search Garfield on parents' websites like Common Sense Media and they always complain about what a bad influence Garfield is on children. Yeah, I'm not gonna shut up about that website. It's just too funny to read. I can't help but notice that Jim Davis does a lot of business in Asia, especially in China. Like, Garfield has appeared in Chinese children's books to teach children English. Uh, Garfield's gonna appear at uh, Six Flags in China. Uh, Garfield has like two million MasterCards in China. And uh, Jim Davis owns a uh, pizza parlor in Malaysia. Hey, I'm kind of surprised that Jim Davis hasn't, like, teamed up with Japanese artists and produced a Garfield manga or something. The reporter mentions that Garfield has impacted culture in a large way, rivaling even religious figures. Garfield's cultural penetration has approached that of the Buddha or the Bible, although I don't recall Jesus Christ appearing on any Chinese toothpastes. Yeah, suck on that, John Lennon! Garfield has outdone the Beatles. He is bigger than Jesus and the Buddha. I mean, you could not imagine how much lasagna he had to eat to get that size. The Vice reporter then explains Garfield's secret to success. Now, I always assumed that Garfield's secret to success was like his good looks, or how witty he is, or how everyone can relate to him, but no, that's not it. The actual secret is that Garfield does no politics. To maintain that level of worldwide appeal, Davis and his team have followed one golden rule, no politics. And Vice really wanted to emphasize this because it's one of the first things they mentioned in the write-up for this interview. Garfield takes the brave political stance of no political stance. Yeah, except the time he appeared in an anti-drug PSA, Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue. That was actually introduced by former President Bush and the First Lady Barbara Bush. Now, Garfield actually explained to me why he did Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue. Uh, you might remember that one pipe comic that Lasagna Cat covered? Yeah, Garfield felt bad that he smoked in a family comic strip, and he wanted to set a better example for children. Now, I said in an older video that Garfield regret being in Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue, but Garfield corrected me. What he actually regret was that he wasn't the main character and he didn't get more screen time. Yeah, it has to be all about you, doesn't it, Garfield? Lord Davis then explains why he doesn't do political humor. It doesn't translate into other countries, and it dates the comic. Well, there are two problems with uh, doing something, a political comment, social comment, something like that. It doesn't translate. Right. People in other countries wouldn't understand it, or in other cultures, or at other times do. Uh, it dates the strip, you know, going, Okay, that was 1983. Despite the no politics rule, that didn't stop Odie and Jim Davis from cross-dressing as British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. I don't know what political statement Davis was trying to make here, but I'm sure he'd say now that Thatcher jokes are too dated. Uh, it's probably a good idea you don't let Mike Pence see this picture, Davis. He's not an ally of the LGBT community. Davis explaining why he's not political is nothing new. 
In uh, 1987, he wrote an introduction to this Pogo book, and in it, uh, Davis explains that he doesn't do social commentary because he's not interested in doing extensive amounts of research. Um, I'm not sure who wants Garfield to be political. Like, maybe there's some Garfield fans that are, like, asking Davis, you know, what do you think of Mike Pence since the, both of them are friends? Or, or maybe the reporter just wanted to try and trap Davis into saying something controversial. Kind of like how Dilbert artist Scott Adams can't stop himself from making hot take after hot take. And Davis was wise enough not to fall for it. Although he forgot to tell the people in the art department to take down this one anti-Trump magazine. Whoops. The topic then shifts to merchandise and the reporter asks Lord Davis whether he considers Garfield products art. Lord Davis then enlightens the reporter and explains that Garfield is like a furry, more family-friendly version of George Carlin, who says things that people wish they could say but don't. Early on, I always felt that Garfield says things that people feel but they don't necessarily have the courage to say, but they'll have it on a coffee mug. I'd like the mornings better if they started later. Things like that, they go, oh, that cat, look at him, he hates mornings. <laughs> you know. Kind of look for things that resonates with people that, that they can use to express themselves. The wisdom Garfield preaches on his merchandise is too profound and otherworldly for our poor journalists to comprehend. He struggles to find words, and the best he can come up with is to ask Lord Davis whether Garfield is actually a god! Or is kind of like a, a... Do you think he could ever be mistaken for a deity, I guess? Lord Davis closes the interview with a very humble answer. Gar Garfield, after 40 years, is, yeah, he's attained a bit of an iconic status. There have been movies, there have been books, there have been other things. And I certainly want him to be known as a comic strip because that's, that's where he really entertains. He really struts his stuff. That's his sweet spot. And that's the interview. And I'm sorry to say... But Jim Davis doesn't truly understand Garfield, even after 40 years. Let me tell you the real secret behind Garfield's success that Garfield himself has taught me. Garfield is actually a deeply political comic strip, contrary to what Jim Davis thinks. When Garfield says things like, I wish mornings would start later, you know, Jim Davis just looks at that slogan and thinks, oh, ha, 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 that's so cute, that's so funny, and put it on t-shirts and coffee mugs and make tons of money. But Garfield is actually speaking truth to power when he says things like that. He's not actually speaking to humans, though. He's speaking to cats, like myself. For 40 years, Garfield has used his comic strip to orange pill generations of felines and to let them know that it's okay to feel pride in who they are. It is okay to oversleep, it is okay to overeat, it is okay to be lazy, it is okay to hate dogs, it is okay to treat owners like they're servants, it is okay to be a cat. And Jim Davis has never noticed this in 40 years. He doesn't want to admit that his own creation has played him. When Jim Davis is trying to act coy at the end of that interview about whether Garfield could be a deity, I think the reason why is because Jim Davis wants to continue believing that he is the sole man responsible for Garfield's success. Uh, the real deity in Jim Davis' mind is the man he sees in the mayor. Jim Davis' cultural penetration has approached that of the Buddha or the Bible. Although I don't recall Jesus Christ appearing on the outskirts of Muncie, Indiana. Or as kind of like a... Do you think he could ever be mistaken for the Buddha or Jesus Christ after 40 years? Is yeah, I've attained a bit of an iconic status. There have been movies, there have been books, there have been other things. And I certainly want them to be known as so, an icon. That's where it really entertains and really stress his stuff. That's his sweet spot. Hi, I'm Jim Davis. This is my boss, Jim Davis. Jim Davis. Familiarity in the U.S. is 94% with every man, woman, and child. Equal to Santa Claus. There are over two and a half million Jim Davis. MasterCards in use in China. Jim Davis. Maps have been downloaded over 28 million times. Jim Davis has 15 million fans on Facebook. I really want to know you. I really want to go with you. I'm Peter the Cat. I'm a student of Garfield. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Bye, everybody. What does God need with a starship? Who is this creature? I appreciate your time, your dedication, and your faith in Jim Davis.